Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Friday, March 23rd, 10.47 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook moving into April. Second week of spring does not look warm across North America here. Heads up, Grand Solar Minimum much? <laughs> Let's go right to the weather.gov map. After all, we are weather-ready ambassadors. And let's take the, a look at the current watches and warnings. Heavy snow over the west, critical fire weather over the high plains, and heavy rain potential moving into the week. The threat for heavy snow will persist over portions of the Cascades, Sierras, and the Rockies until early next week. An extended period of dry and windy conditions will lead to critical weather and fire danger here in Southeastern Colorado and northeastern New Mexico, as well as southern Arizona. And we have winter storm watches and warnings from Virginia all the way to North Dakota, which is going to pick up quite a considerable amount of snow in central Iowa and northern Illinois. And we're going to take a look at the models, guys. We got a lot of tabs open. There's so much science coming out today. I need to get it all in here. Moderate melting Friday of record snowfall, Weather Service says. Uh, the snow is still all there in the Northeast, and they are feeling it. So this is going to wake up a lot of people, guys. Our numbers are soaring as far as the channel's concerned. Since the new year, which is less than three months, we have averaged 1,000 subscribers per week for the last 10 weeks. That's correct, 10,000 subscribers in the last 10 weeks. So whatever you guys are doing, sharing these videos, keep it up because it's working. We're getting some information out to the public and with snow sitting on the ground like this in the springtime, people are going to start to wonder what happened to the global warming. And that's a heads up. Let's look at all the global warming that's going to be falling across North America over the next few days. We can just check out the GFS model here, and I will run it through. This just came in. So we're looking 6 to 12 hours out now. By tomorrow afternoon, northern Iowa is going to be completely covered in snow. There might be blizzard warnings issued. We'll have to take keep a watch on this. If you're in central, north central Iowa, you are going to have at least 12 inches of snow on the ground in the next 12 hours. So if you're watching this video in the morning, you're probably buried and you're looking for answers. This is going to continue in snowfall totals in 16 to 24 inch range for northeastern Iowa could be expected. We'll extend down into Illinois and <clears throat> this is what we're looking at for Sunday. By Sunday, this storm has moved all the way down into the Virginias, West Virginia and Virginia, and is dumping heavy snow in the mountains here, according to the models. Also, we're looking at northwestern California picking up at least two feet more of snow. The Sierras, another foot in the northern Sierras. And if we run these models through into April, the snow keeps coming, folks. There is no end in sight to the snow in spring. And that's a heads up. Thank you, Al. Easter weather forecast for the UK set for the coldest April on record. At least the weekend forecast is going to be the coldest April for the next the last five years. And we're going to continue to be breaking records simply based on the historical evidence and the data. Here's the CMIP6 solar forcing data set in maroon, extending down to the right. You can see the prediction for solar cycle 25 is weaker than 24, meaning it will be colder on planet Earth, not warmer. Because the warming we've seen in the last 80 years is not because of man, it's because of the sun. Watch record rainfall in Gutang cause extensive damage. This is in South Africa where they were lacking rain, and now they have too much rain. Similar to the California effect, where they said there will be no rain, and then all of it comes in just a few moments. It's been pouring rain in Gutang, and some areas flooded records have caused chaos in many areas. We're talking all of the rain uh, for the month in just a few hours. And when you do that because of cosmic ray flux, 
you get sinkholes, and that's what happens. And that's tonight's first boom. Why is this happening? It's not because you didn't pay your carbon tax. This severe dust storm hitting Crete in Greece was predicted just seven days ago on this channel. This is not the end of the world, Armageddon or Nibiru. It is dust kicked up from uh, the Sahara, Saharan dust from Libya towards the eastern Mediterranean on March 22nd caused a very unique severe dust storm that hit, hitting uh, Greece. Excellent pictures coming out of there. You get links to all this down below. Uh, the bottom left of the video here where it says show more in gray, click there. Major crop losses feared as water shortages deepen in Islamabad. More crop losses being reported worldwide. Add that to the map, Ice Age Farmer. New data is confirming increased frequency of extreme weather events. This is coming out of the European Academy Science Advisory Council today. Man-made climate change has been proven to have increased recent extreme weather and associated floods. Well, what has happened is there has been extreme recent extreme weather and associated floods. However, man has nothing to do with it. And we're about to explain to you real quickly why here. Here's another article coming out today. New data confirms increasing frequent extreme weather events. According to the new study published this week by the European Academies of Science Advisory Council, I just showed you the paper. You'll get links to it. It shows that extreme weather events have become more frequent over the past 36 years. True. Specifically, the new figures show that there has been a significant increase in hydrologic events as compared to even with just five years ago. Huh. I wonder why that could be. Oh, could it be cosmic rays? It, yes, it could be. The same reason you see more contrails, which you're claiming are chemtrails, are the same reason there are atmospheric rivers flying through the sky, according to Al Gore, and dumping right here in California. It has nothing to do with man. It has everything to do with cosmic ray increase moving into the grand solar minimum. Not only are we moving into the grand solar minimum, where if you look over to the right of the chart here, cosmic rays will be increasing continuously for the rest of your lifetime, they will continue to increase for thousands more years, causing an evolutionary leap cycle on the planet. These mass extinctions are not the end of the Earth. They're the beginning of a whole new gamut of species that will emerge geologically instantaneously very shortly in the future. Now, guys, I want to link you to this paper, A Rapid Cosmic Ray Increase in B.C., 3372 to 71 from ancient buried tree rings. This is a pretty recent paper being published on the 14th of November of last year. <coughs> what it proves accidentally is they were doing some buried tree ring studies in China and they found a huge cosmic ray increase in 3372 BC. Well, what does that mean for us and those that are watching our channel? You know that cosmic rays are directly linked to increased cloud nucleation, stratospheric aerosols, which cause atmospheric rivers, increased muon heating in the subsurface, volcanic eruption, and rapid cooling on the Earth. Now, what you're looking at is the GISP-2 ice core, the last 10,000 years coming out of Greenland, and the interglacial temperature graph. Okay, we're going to come back to it. 3,372 B.C. is... 5,380 B.C., basically, or 5,380 years before present, and this is a before present graph. So we come back here 5,480 years before present, right here, 5,480, and we go look what happened. <gasps> that cosmic ray increase resulted in a temperature drop of 2 degrees C geologically instantaneously at that time frame. Now, it, it is not mentioned in the paper because they do not have the multidisciplinary approach that you guys and myself do. Those that are watching the channel know exactly what I'm talking about. What they found is this temperature drop-off. As the cosmic rays increased, there was a rapid drop-off in temperature because cloud nucleation increased, the climate changed, and volcanoes went off. Dropping the temperature into a mini ice age, very similar to the one we're going into, only the one we're going into you can see is going to be much colder. 
but we'll also experience at least a 2 degrees C temperature variation within your lifetime. And that's a heads up. And that's coming right from the mainstream. I'm just putting the pieces together for you. And I will leave you links to this article so you can do the same. If you want to go find this graph, it's on Solar Shutdown on Facebook, which is our Facebook page. So you can go find that there. I'll link it on Facebook tonight with this paper so people can start to put the pieces together for themselves. Now, Earth's climate is moving towards the mini ice age. This is an article coming out claiming that Stephen Hawking, who just passed away, God rest his soul, and all the bad math he created. <laughs> it claims that Stephen Hawking said back in 2016, he warned us that the Earth's climate is moving towards mini ice age. Right, this is the first I'm hearing about it, because I thought he supported the global warming hypothesis. So this article is a rehashing of some interesting information, but it is a narrative change happening in the mainstream, getting you ready, preparing you for what is about to occur, which you should be preparing for right now. Let's go to a quick seismic update. Thank you, Tupac. We have a moderate uh, uptick worldwide, even as the space weather is increasing. But uh, the most recent quake of note is a 606 kilometer of depth at 4.6 in the Fiji Islands in the Blot Echo Range, which could be a precursor to a major quake in this region. So we're going to be watching this closely over the next 24 hours to see what happens here. We have a deep 4.6 at 606 kilometers, and this energy is going to be moving up and be expressed as a larger magnitude earthquake somewhere in this region. So that's a heads up. The activity on the West Coast has fallen off, thankfully, up in the Cascadia region, um, and it has been translated around the world globally. In the mid-ocean ridges, we have some 5.2 activity, a huge cluster of moderate activity in the Caribbean plate here. But nothing of note. But we should be watching down here in the Fiji region, heads up New Zealand, for a large quake kicking off in the next 24 hours because of this deep blot echo at 4.6. Google blot echo if you have no idea what I'm talking about. B-L-O-T-E-C-H-O. -E Coming from the Manila Times, Mayon volcano emitting ash and lava anew after they downgraded it to three. It is re-erupting. I'll leave you links to this. More volcano news coming out today from BBC. Mount Etna is sliding towards the sea at a rate of 14 millimeters per year. I'll leave you links to this. This could lead to massive landslide potential, killing tens of thousands of people. So take a look at this article. If you're in this region, it is um, something you should be concerned about. 14 millimeters a year is no small potatoes. Worldwide Volcano News, Ducono, Reventador, Sabancaya, Ibico. We also have Mayon, Sakura, Jima, and Sabancaya erupting all in the last 36 hours. If you come over to Volcano Watch, our partner, you'll leave, I'll leave you links to it. Give them a thumbs up and chat over here. They have a live stream of dozen, uh, tons of volcanoes here. Here we have Torrealba, Popo, Shinmo, Sinabung, Agung, I mean, they've got it all and it's live. So come over here and check them out. They just started another live stream called Earthquake Early Warning 24-7 1080p stream where they've got their eye on the Cascadia zone. So if you got nothing to do, you're interested in earthquakes, you're in this region and you want to watch or chat with some like-minded people, come over here to Volcano Watch and say hello. They love us. <coughs> it's a really good resource uh, for you to get up-to-date seismic information that you can interpret yourself without someone else telling you what it means. That way you can learn something. I warned a week ago about the Quintaru area of the Yucatan Peninsula. There was a federal warning to stay out. American citizens should stay out. This Iowa family did not listen. They went to Tulum. I was there 20 years ago. It was very safe. Not safe anymore. This Iowa family was found dead in the resort town. Days after they got there, they sat in their hotel room dead. No one heard from them. There is, quote, unquote, no evidence of foul play. And we're really searching for information on 
why this family's lives were taken simply from traveling to Tulum, which is the walled city in Quinta Ru. So, heed the warnings. Do not go to the Yucatan Peninsula, folks. Researchers tracking the Chinese space station as it falls. Smokabong 1 is expected to fall to Earth any day now. The uh, estimate is March 31st. Give a few days when it does. These guys are watching it. And the day draws near. Vishnu Reddy uh, at the University of Arizona, assistant professor of planetary sciences, and Tanner Campbell probably can tell who's Vishnu and who's Tanner. But Vishnu is Tanner than Tanner, which is really weird. Anyway, launched in 2011, Tiangong 1, which is I just referred to as something else, served as a laboratory for three manned missions, and now it's re-entering. Just six short years later. Seven short years later. So if you want to watch this faux pas re-enter and you want to know where it's going to crash, follow those guys. Now an alien star sideswiped our solar system and sent comets reeling 70,000 years ago, according to scientists. And this new article coming out for all you Nibiru people, there it is. It's gone. It came by 70,000 years ago and it was almost a light year away. But what it did do and what they proved in this article... Guys, if you've never heard of Schultz's star, <clears throat> it's just 20 light years from Earth and moving away. And if you reverse it back towards us, it, it would appear that about 70,000 years ago, it grazed our solar system and it perturbed lots of bodies. Of the 10,000 simulations of the star's potential orbits, 98% showed it passing through the inner Oort cloud, which is nonsense. I have a... Um, a video on why the Oort cloud is nonsense. It's a made-up thing like dark matter. But what you can find is that there are many objects in our solar system that are perturbed. The original theory looking at the paths of more, hundred, more than 300 small bodies in our solar system with hyperbolic orbits, um... Apparently, this star perturbed them, and that's why they're off kilter. So I'll leave you links to this. You can read it for yourself, and you can gain knowledge on what happened in our solar system's past. There was an electric past in our solar system, and maybe 70,000 years ago when Neanderthal and Homo sapien were, were on Earth, they witnessed this, and it's part of our multivariate uh, religious and historic mythology. And here's the paper where the solar system meets the solar neighborhood. Patterns in the distribution of radiant radiance of observed hyperbolics in minor bodies. And you can read the abstract here. I'll leave you links to it. So that's where that information is coming from. <clears throat> Let's talk about the, pip, the flipping uh, magnetic poles on planet Earth. It's increasing, folks. And that's not good news for the weather. It's not good news for this descent into the grand solar minimum. It's not good news for the population on the planet that is not prepared for what's about to happen. Now, this is coming right out of the mainstream, this article on the 21st. It's to inform users that the WMM gridded variation error has exceeded the performance specifications in the Arctic region. And that means the North Pole is moving so quickly that they can no longer follow it. Uh, they, it's not in layman's terms because everyone would sh their pants. But basically what it means is that the magnetic poles are moving quicker than expected. So you don't have much time to properly prepare for the oncoming shifts and what will happen in your lifetime. It's anyone's guess how it unfolds. But if you're properly prepared prior to the event, you will not panic. Pitifully. Capiche? I'll leave you links to the article. What happens when the magnetic field starts moving faster than expected? As this just came out two days prior to this event, this event occurred. Mass whale stranding at Hamlin Bay in Western Australia, over 150 pilot whales, most of which are now dead, got lost because of what I just showed you. There's no other explanation needed. New NASA model finding landslide threats in real time during heavy rains. If you're in a landslide region or don't know, come over and check out this model. 
It's awesome. There's information here. You can see the high risk zones as it gets toward yellow and red, more dangerous. You can see real time landslide risks change on earth with this uh, modeling program. <clears throat> so if you're in a high landslide risk area, this could be of use to you for prepping and for saving your lives. Tomorrow, I'm going to be posting our third week interview from Revolution Radio, our radio program every Wednesday night, 10 to 12 midnight East Coast time on Revolution Radio, which is at freedomslips.com. We're going to be posting our third edition where we talk about chapters 7, 8, and 9 in cold times, preparing for the mini ice age, which includes keeping warm, sources of light, power, and heat, and many other topics that will help you survive and thrive in the coming times. Do not buy the book from Amazon. Buy it from us. It's the cheapest anywhere in the planet with free shipping. We get nothing out of this except less questions in the comment section. And that's a heads up. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. The weather is changing. It's spring and it's still winter. And the winter is not ending. And Noah just...